Hold up. With a lot of passengers on board, possibly more than 500, a diversion due to fog at the destination airport should be avoided because of the inconvenience to passengers and the cost and disorganization of its operations for the airline. 50. In very poor visibility conditions, it is not possible for a pilot to perform a manual landing. Therefore, an autoland function is developed in the autopilot. Autoland availability is not mandatory for certification. However, it is better to have it for a smooth entry into service. The development of the autoland is much more difficult than the other functions of the autopilot. The first reason is the high number of parameters affecting the tuning – weight, center of gravity position, wind, altitude and runway slope. The second reason is the accuracy required for the touchdown point. 100. It is also due to the ground effect. 70. The behavior close to the ground cannot be extrapolated properly from wind tunnel tests. Therefore, many test flights are needed. A differential GPS is used to obtain very precise trajectories during the tests. The flight test engineers have a specific tool to modify some of the parameters of the computers for the tuning of the guidance in approach, for the flare and for the rollout. For example, if it is estimated that the height of the flare is too low, it could be increased for the following landing. 50, 40. 30. A progressive modification of the various parameters in a given flight can allow convergence towards a satisfactory tuning for this configuration. A first model is built with a few autolands. It is then progressively updated as the development progresses. With a new standard of autopilot computer, Tests are performed in the corners of the weight center of gravity domain in calm wind. Then, if these are satisfactory, more tests are carried out in windy conditions with different runway slopes. For the tuning, it is not sufficient to obtain good results with a smooth and precise touchdown. It has to be considered as acceptable by the pilot, which means close to what he or she would do manually. For example, if the flare is too late, even if it is perfect, the pilot may become alarmed and take over manually. For each test, the airplane is stabilized in approach at the latest at 1,000 feet. The target is to monitor the tracking of the localizer and of the glide slope. Whatever the conditions, bank angle variations, deviations, speed, etc., have to remain within tolerances. Compromises are necessary. For example, the tolerances for speed are plus 10 knots and minus 5 knots. A very precise tracking would lead to rapid successive thrust variations which are uncomfortable. 500. Therefore, some deviations are tolerated. A pilot accepts a high-speed excursion more easily than a low one, hence these tolerances. An important parameter is the wind. 100. Usual limits are 10 knots tailwind, 50, 40, and 35 knots headwind, measured at the tower, but they vary with aircraft type. A flare is not performed the same way with some tailwind and with a very strong headwind. Therefore, tests are carried out with several values, obviously with various weights and center of gravity positions. For Airbus airplanes, the limit for crosswind is at least 20 knots. For these landings, the difficulty is to obtain a perfect synchronization between the flare and the partial lateral D-crab. 
Autoland tests are performed at the crosswind limit and at an intermediate value. After touchdown of the main gear, there is a phase called derotation up to the contact of the nose wheels with the ground. 30, 20, 10, retard, four. It has to be tuned for a rather fast maneuver in order to avoid breaking nose up. But it should not be too abrupt so as to remain comfortable. On Airbus airplanes, the Autoland is certified with one engine inoperative. Lateral guidance is less precise with an engine inoperative. Any speed correction leads to a slight lateral destabilization of the airplane due to the asymmetric thrust variation. In turbulence or with crosswind variations, there might be deviations or bank angles that need to remain within tolerances. The regulations require that a real engine shutdown be demonstrated in the most critical conditions. Experience shows that this is a failure at around 200 feet, as the autothrust will compensate the speed decrease and create a lateral destabilization at the beginning of the flare and possibly of the decrab. A critical maneuver is also the extension of a single reverse during the rollout which may create a significant deviation. It is tested at the limit of crosswind. Automatic go-arounds are performed at different heights to check that the correct pitch attitude is quickly reached. They are also carried out with one engine inoperative. The lateral deviation must remain within tolerances. The certification is performed with the execution of 100 autolands in various conditions agreed with the authorities and with the main parameters up to their limits. These flight tests allow the autoland behavior to be assessed and the simulator model to be validated. Then a set of 2,000 autolands is performed in a simulator covering the whole spectrum of parameters to demonstrate the precision of touchdown. Several failure cases are tested in flight and in the simulator. There are risks in the Autoland flight tests. The reaction time is sometimes extremely short, for example in case of a late flare. Tuning of the Autoland is a difficult task due to the number of parameters to be taken into account. With modifications of the airplane's aerodynamics, a new tuning of the Autoland, or at least a validation, may be performed. <laughs>